Hi, it's uh, Jason here at the Centre for Computing History. Um, it is uh, Synthesised Weekend. It's the end of Synthesised Weekend. Um, so there's no point in me promoting this to you because we've already done it. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm here with Paul from Salisbury Synths. Um, hi, Paul. Hello. Hi. Um, we've got an amazing setup here with loads of retro keyboards, um, an Apple Mac doing some sequencing, which is uh, interesting. Um, and yeah, Paul, just tell us a little bit about what we've got. So I was trying to set up a sort of authentic mid-80s system uh, with a, uh, you know, as best as I, I could with the kit I own. And this is actually <laughs> the first time I've actually got all this kit together, all synced together in one go. There's all stuff dotted around my house, but never have I seen it all. So you're so not work. normally using it, it's just it, normally, gathering dust. I'm just like any like, musician. I just, I literally, if I want to record a part, I just grab the synth, record it in, um, into Logic or whatever, or Sonar, and then that goes away again and that's done. So I've, I've never actually done this before, so this was quite good fun. I think at least the first half of yesterday was spent just setting it up and trying to get it working. <laughs> and there was even a bit of custom circuitry, which I'll go into in a minute. Right. Um, but yeah, so the, the, the first challenge was actually to get this Mac, my Mac Plus running a sequencer, which is, uh, I only managed to find one that would work, uh, and that was Trax. Uh, so we've got Trax running, a very sort of simple 16, uh, MIDI channels, obviously no audio whatsoever. Right. Um, a bit of event list, uh, a bit of uh, piano roll style editing, uh -huh. uh, quantizing, that kind of thing. So it's 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 perfectly fine to write what, a song. What more do you need? Yeah, that's everything you need to write a song. Uh, then uh, I'll come back to my stuff right at the end because mm -hmm. that's that's that. Even though it, it looks like it's from the 80s, it's from right now. <laughs> <laughs> then we got the drumulator here, um, uh, which uh, is doing the rhythm. Uh, Amazing. That is a uh, classic sound. Uh, that no, is hip hop all over. Yeah, Two yeah. It's, crew. It's the, it was the first thing to use the, that drum set, which I think then did go on to the, the is it the SB twelve hundred yeah. and the, doing all those hip hop sounds. Uh -huh. So I've got that running, and I'll come over at that this in a minute because this is using external clock and is synced all together. Right. Um, and then we got a Roland DP five effects processor, very early digital effects processor, and you can hear that on this <laughs> snare actually. Uh, it is just the, the reverb of the 80s, basically. <laughs> uh, then we got my Roland Juno 60. Uh, probably one of the most recognisable poly synths. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, the Pro One. Um, is, these, the other thing is this is all uh, synced up via MIDI, apart from the drumulator, which uses external clock. Mm -hmm. So these are. So if I want to play the Pro One, I'm actually on it at the moment. I select it in tracks. This is operating as my master keyboard. Right. So you can hear. I mean, you, you could spend hours. I do. I, I love it. I mean, that's a very simple sound for the Pro One. It can do, it's got so much yeah. cross-modulation effects that yeah. uh, that is... It's a synth that I always wanted to own. It's, a, it's a really... Beautiful. You can, you can spend hours and hours and hours with that synth. It's such a fat brilliant. sound. Uh, it's to, mainly with all the cross-mods, because you can add really raspy sounds, and it's, it's, it's a lot of the cross-mod stuff that's all on uh, Yasuo upstairs, yeah, Eric's, yeah. all those little bright sounds. And, mm -hmm. Uh, then coming over here, I select it on tracks, clicking the record to enable the MIDI channel. Mm -hmm. uh, this this is my it's the DX7 F, uh, num, uh, two FD. Um, uh, actually, I think there's a is it the floppy disk still in it? I can't remember. I don't know. <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> I haven't actually used that this weekend yet. But um, there is a, there's a load of real classic bass sounds on that. Yeah. Uh, but this is just I've just been using the, uh, the 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 famous presets like the marimba. <laughs> That's got the DEP5 reverb all yeah. over it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, where's, where's famous tuba bells, all of those. Um, the great thing about this, the Mark II is that it um, has a much cleaner sound than the Mark I. Mm -hmm. I think it's, ste mm -hmm. it's, ste yeah, it is, it's stereo as well. Right. Um, so yeah, really great synth. And then down here we got the Ensonic ESQ1 which I think is like the real lost synth of the 80s. Yeah. Um, it, it generates such classic sounds, um, and, but it never gets a recognition of the Stix 7 or the Juno mm -hmm. or a lot of these mm -hmm. other 80s ones. Yeah. 
yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. wavetable synth. Mm -hmm. It is insanely powerful. And again, today I'm only using a fraction of it because this actually has eight voices and you can actually do an entire song using its built-in sequencer um, in, internally. Uh, I'm just using it for single sounds today, but yeah. in fact, it, the main job was to turn off the other eight, uh, the other seven voice, <laughs> <laughs> voices. Um, and you could, you could use this to run, you could, do, you could run all eight channels of this over MIDI to this uh -huh. uh, and do your entire song. It's got drum samples in as well. Right. Uh, and I'm sure there would have been a lot of home sort of setups that would have done exactly that. Yeah. Um, and there's a, I've got a cartridge of sounds as well. I mean... I, Very bright sounding. Yeah. Got, and clean as well. Uh, I really like that one. Vocal. Yeah, it has got... It's so, just to hear that little... Yeah. vocal sample to it vocal sounds so yeah that's that's a really great synth and then we got um my own uh at megatron mm -hmm. loaded with the Audiotron software so if i pick it off here So that, that is, is um, yeah, that is uh, eight <laughs> bits. Uh, for people who don't know what I do, I do eight bit synthesizers. Um, that's a, the mini. That's a kit. That's about so using the same processor and about sort of sixty percent of the features of the full one. Uh -huh. uh, DIY kits, great for kids to build themselves yeah, and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, everything I do at the present is all eight bit, and it's about finding unique and interesting ways. And also uh, the other key thing about the synths I do is I create multiple audio engines for the same products. So uh, you buy this synth here and I can upload over a USB cable, I can upload a drum machine and it becomes a drum machine right. or a string machine. Uh, there's currently seven different versions for this. There's uh -huh. two versions for that, three versions for a Eurorack module. There's also a Eurorack module that I haven't got here today, which um, is called the Ossitron. Right. Um, and uh, that takes a lot of the features of the uh, Megatron and puts it in Eurorack format. Very cool. So. And it's yeah. completely MIDI accessible, so, mm -hmm. you know, you've got all... I mean, that's a very little box to yeah. have such a big, dirty sound coming out of. Uh, it's pretty impressive. And it's, and it's an 8-bit... Um, cool. There is no analogue stage other than the very final stage, which is an analogue filter to take off the pulse width modulation frequency, which is uh -huh. just a very high frequency that you just take yeah, it off at human off hearing it. and right. range, and that's it done. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that is that is the kit. Very oh, and cool. of course, the thing I missed was the Fostex. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Fostex RA. Actual mechanical part. Yeah, yeah. Real uh, moving parts. Yeah, given the heads a good clean today, it <laughs> literally was a pile of cotton buds <laughs> with, with it once I'd finished with it. Um, and yeah, so, so I, I had this idea that initially, let's just see if we could get the thing running with MIDI clock. So I'm using... Uh, Pro Kenton, well, I'm using a Kenton Pro DCB to control convert MIDI to this, the Juno, and I'm using a, two, a Pro 2000 to convert the clock to the drumulator, mm -hmm. and also to do all of the MIDI to CV and gate conversion for the Pro One. Right. So uh, using both of those channels, and the uh, the idea initially was just to see if the Mac could drive everything. Um, and if I, I, I've only really got the drum machine working, I haven't got any tracks recorded yet, I'll come to that in a minute. But if I hit play, you can hear, oh, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it decided, oh no, actually that hit the end of the song. The, the, right. That's one feature of this tracks is if you haven't recorded a number of bars, it, it, it will just, just stop, stop, stop. it won't just play on like Logic or right. Ableton or anything. Yeah, so yeah, generally when you're wanting to mug about it, it's actually better to sit, hit it in record so it thinks it's recording right. something. Mm -hmm. Another classic thing with this setup at the moment, every time I want to restart, I must take it out of run, stop it and put it back into run, otherwise it picks up where it left off. Right. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a way for me to resync it automatically using um, the run stop jack here, mm -hmm. but I need to create something that will take the, um, the clock start stop, MIDI start stop clock and turn it into something that this can read. Uh, I That's don't, interesting. I don't think the Pro 2000 can do it, so I don't think. Back in the day I created something called the clock sync, um, which ah. created or took um, MIDI time clock and created the pulses for 
um, like some of the old Roland gear. Ah. Yes, um, yeah. That had a start-stop line on it yes. for controlling those. It's probably yeah. the same kind of thing would do that. Yeah, um, yeah. So it actually mm. is the line of a din. The, so they were din stink. Uh, din stink. Yeah. The, the through it, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. The start-stop line. It's of, just the same thing, but put into jacks, isn't it? I reckon. Yeah, so. literally. Uh, mm. Yeah, five pin to that would 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 have worked for that. So mm. anyway, for for today, I've just been start resetting yeah. it back to the start, um, and then. I took it a step further because once I realised once I'd used all these synths and uh, I've only got five channels of synths, which actually would have been more than enough for today, but I was just trying to yeah. extend the theory. <laughs> uh, what, what do I do next? I was like, well, then you just play the synths along to the tape. But I actually wanted to try and sync the, the tape and the MIDI up. Um, obviously, Simpty would be the way most people go. This software couldn't do Simpty. Even if, even if it could read it, uh, even if I could put Simpty on here, there's no way I don't know this read would, would read it and right. process all the MIDI, other MIDI data, send out MIDI clock, all the notes and everything. I just don't think it would happen, and it and it can't do it anyway. So right. it's not. So uh, what it does do is it will do MIDI start, stop, and clock. Mm -hmm. So I then started thinking, well, how do I get that onto tape? And I created this little device here, which uh, uses an Arduino library called Soft Modem, mm -hmm. which basically um, takes a serial signal and converts it to AFSK, right. which is something that will sit nicely on an audio format. Yep. Dig oh, digital signals do not like being recorded no. onto tape. They mm -hmm. need to be converted into something that's more sinusoidal. Um, uh, so I created that. I then created a few sort of nice features that would allow me to put it in between a read and a write mode, and a little green write mode. Mm -hmm. So I, it's spewing out at AFSK when the red light is red. When it's green, it's reading it in off right. the tape. Uh -huh. uh, so I've already striped this tape with some clock earlier today. Uh, uh, so let's just see if this works. There's the moment of truth. Yeah, trial by fire. Press the locate zero button, get it back to the start. I've done my stop and start there. I need to put tracks into external sync mode mm -hmm. and hit play so it's just waiting. Tape's back at the start. I've got external clock on the drumulator. There is there could be something I've forgotten, <laughs> but let's go, let's go for it. And um what I might I can't do it this run, but um, I might uh, just play a little bit of the sound of what that sounds like as well. But mm. this will prove that it works to start with. So take it. There we go. Yay! So that is. There's always a little jitter, so I, I imagine having a bar of blank would be at the, at the start of your song would be good. Yeah, you have that little hiccup. But if I hit stop. It stops as well. Right. So so that. So that's the the stripe tape yeah. creating the the timing through there to control the uh, drum through machine keeping so, yeah. time. From, from there, through to there, through to the Mac, through to the Kenton Pro 2000, through to the drum right. <laughs> Impressive. <laughs> so yeah, that's... It's just something nobody does anymore, nobody needs to do anymore. No. And it just gives you an idea of how convoluted these processes were to make this stuff happen back in the day. Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, I, I was sort of, del I was, wasn't certain it was gonna work, <laughs> but uh, I was delighted when it did. I'll give a little blast of what it sounds like on the tape. Not the nicest sound in the world. Um, uh, it's on the blackjack, I think. I'll play a bit of that. So that is the, the signal, the MIDI signal that's on that channel. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, let's hit stop on there. Like that. And then put this. So that's an eight uh, channel. Uh, Recorder, so exactly. you've got one channel that has gone. Yeah, that's one channel for this for this time code. Yeah, well, not time gone. code, but for the, the um, AFS code. So I got seven channels. So you got seven left. channels now. You can record your audio on. So in a in a sort of real life situation, I mean, I, I don't think it's uncommon to have uh, to record some stuff like the drums might go down to tape, mm -hmm. the vocals and some keyboard parts, and then you may just also have some live stuff running off of this as well when you do your mix. Um, mm -hmm. I think it would depend on sort of personal preference as mm. to how much was like, obviously the problem with live MIDI going straight down to a mix is that years later, if you want to come back to a song, you've got to find the discs the original with all files the and everything else. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, definitely. definitely. Uh, I mean, I the, the other problem that when, when I was doing this, um, again, back in the day, but um, you, would, you would do stuff with the drums first. So if you, you were, you're doing something, you, you would, to give you the ability to mix it, you would record it all and you'd use most of those seven channels yeah, for drums, sure, yeah. mix it and then bounce it down 
to one track again, yeah. allowing you then to use all the rest of the tracks. Exactly. And, it, yeah. and you know, and obviously every time you did that, there was a little bit of less quality. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, again, it's just one of those things you don't think of. Um, now it's so easy with hundreds of tracks uh, on a sequencer. Yeah. And, and anything, even if you did bounce something, it's all digital, so there's no loss anyway. Yes, um, yeah. So well, I think the, the kids that were recording a track earlier with this were sort of slightly, I was trying to explain to them that I think, I think they, they wanted to do the vocals and they were like, well, don't we just do that onto the computer like we've done everything else? Yeah. Like, that, this could not record no. any vocals. No. You could, could have like half a second at most. Yep. So then we got the, the tape working and yeah, the, the kick went onto one channel and the rest of the drums onto the other and then the synths in stereo on three and four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> um, absolutely. No, so, yeah. it's, it's, such a, it's so far removed from what, what we have now. Mm. Um, it's really nice to see a setup where that just gives that I mean, so what the museum's about is just showing people how things work and actually how difficult things were. Yeah, you, know, you really had to yeah. work for it. Like you say, getting all this kind of stuff set up. Yes, um, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and yeah. the various foibles that they have. If you're, if you're messing around with the, the sync track um, and there was any kind of degradation, it would just lose that sync. Lose and then you're, you're completely messed up. You, you that's why I had to clean the heads, in fact, was because oh, right. it was, it was starting to, the sync was starting to drop mm. out and uh, it didn't get anywhere. But, but it's, it's allowed, the amount I've actually... You sort of managed to sync up, I think, the arpeggiator should sync. I'm going to stop using the tape for now because I don't actually need it for this demo. But if I uh, hit... Oh, no. Oh, it's because I, <laughs> I did that thing of hitting play Same again. again. Record, there we go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, there's got the arpeggiator syncing. Um, there's various things I haven't used. I think I've got an external CV for the uh, filter on that, which I haven't even tried yet. I mean, the day's nearly up, so <laughs> we're, we're done. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, yeah. that's, that's fantastic. Thank you very much for, for bringing all this gear along. Okay, really no appreciate problem. it. Um, interesting stuff. And it's just really, you know, for anybody that hasn't done this stuff um, at, the, at the time when this stuff was out, um, you know, it just shows you how difficult things were and how blessed you are now with all these um, sequences that we have and been able to digitally record on PCs and Macs and things. Mm. Um, it just makes things so much easier. So thank you very much for bringing it all along. No problem. Appreciate it. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll see you at the next one. Thanks very much. Cheers. Yeah.